Okay, this is the homework help video for Math 3, Unit 4, Worksheet 1. So we are going to start with question number 3. So question number 3. So for question number 3, we want to reduce. And so in order to reduce, we want to take a look at are we adding or subtracting. So if we have anything that is adding or subtracting, then we have to factor and we don't, so that means we can reduce each of the different variables. So if we look at this, we want to reduce the numbers here. So 30 and 24, what can I divide out of both? And I can divide out for sure a 6, so that would be 6 times 5, 6 times 4. So then when I divide by 6, 30 divided by 6 is 5, and then 24 divided by 6 is 4. And then I want to look at my A terms, so I want to look at the A terms. And so if I look at the A terms, I have A squared and A to the fifth. So the five here means I have five A's on top and two A's on the bottom. So that means both of these are going to cancel. Both of those are going to be gone. And it's going to take two away from here, so that will leave A to the third. And then on my B's, I have three B's on top, three B's on the bottom. So all of them will cancel. And then for my C's, I have four C's on top, nine C's on the bottom. So all four of those C's will cancel. And it'll take four away from here. So I have nine, and when I take four away from there, that will leave me five. So I'll have C to the fifth. And then for my excluded values, so for my excluded values, when it's just a product, it just means that none, all of these variables, none of those can be zero. So that means A, B, and C cannot equal zero, right? So excluded values just means when the denominator is zero. And if A, B, or C were zero, I would be dividing by zero, and I don't want to do that, okay? All right, so let's take a look at question number seven. So we're going to take a look at question number seven. So for number seven, this looks a lot more complicated than it really is. So what we're looking at is that they want us to take the function for f and then subtract two from it. So here is my function for x. So that's 3x. So anywhere I see an f of x, I want to replace the whole thing with 3x. So 3x is going to go into here and 3x is going to go into there. So I'll have my function for x and then subtract 2. And then my function for x needs to be squared and so I need to square that and I need to square everything not just part of it. So I need to square the 3 and then square the x and then minus 4. So again, all I'm doing is replacing f of x with 3x. So 3x minus 2, and then I need to square 3x, but I need to square the 3 and the x. And then from there, I want to factor. So I want to look for GCF. Nothing divides out of both of those. And then here I have a difference of two squares. So to get a 9x squared, that would be 3x times 3x. And then to get a negative 4, needs to be 2 and 2, and then one of them negative. So I could use 1 and 4, but that won't give me the 0 middle term. And then I want to group those, so I will have 3x, and then a negative 2 and a positive 2, and then that can go in any order. Right? And then I want to reduce that, so I'm going to reduce it. So these will cancel, leaving just a 1 on top. And then I want to find my excluded values. So to find my excluded values, I want to do it on this section before I reduce. So I want to find them over here. And then I want to set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So I want to set 3x minus 2 equal to 0, and then 3x plus 2 equal to 0. And then to solve that, I'm just going to do add 2 over, 
and then divide by 3. And then I want to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to subtract 2 and then divide by 3. So that means x cannot equal 2 thirds or negative 2 thirds. And so I could have written plus or minus on that. Okay. All right, and then let's take a look at question number 11. So for this one right here, I want my x term to come first. I want my x term to come first. So I'm going to just flip flop that around. All right, so we like it to be in alphabetical order, x before y. So I have my original numerator, and then I reverse the negative 6x and the 3y. And so I'm going to do GCF. So from the top, I can reduce out um, a 2. So I can take a 2 out of both. And then here I can take a negative 3 out. So how I did that was I did 4x divided by 2, which gave me 2x, and then negative 2y divided by 2, which gave me negative 1y. And then here I divided by negative 3, so negative 6x divided by negative 3 is positive 2x, and then 3y divided by negative 3 is negative 1y. So these are the same, so that reduces, and then I'm left with negative 2 thirds. So this excluded value is going to be a little different, right? It's going to be in terms of y. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that over here because I don't have enough room. So I'm just taking the 2x minus y, and it can't equal 0. And then I'm going to solve for x. So it's a little different, right, because it doesn't have a number value, but it just means that x cannot equal 1 half of y. All right. And then let's take a look at number 15. So for question number 15, if I look at this, I've got four terms down here. So I could do factor by grouping. But if you look at the two middle terms, they're linear, right? So I can combine like terms. So I want to combine like terms there. So my numerator will stay the same, and then combine the denominator. So negative 8 and negative 3 is negative 11. And then the numerator, I can't really factor anything out of that. I can factor a 1 out, but I'm just going to group it since nothing else will come out of that. And then for the denominator, I have a trinomial, so three terms. So I'm going to list my factors. So these are my factors of 12. And I know I need to have a positive 12 when I multiply. And so these are either both positive or they have to both be negative. And since my middle term is negative, it means I want all of these to be negative. And so now I just need to figure out what will work and then group it up. So I know it has to be 2a and a. And so a clue here is that we know we want to reduce, right? So to help us kind of work through it, we look to see that one of the factors should be a minus 4. So that means it probably is going to be this one, right? Probably going to be that one because that's the only one that has a negative 4 in it. And so will that give me negative 11? And it will, right? So one of these numbers is going to be multiplied by a 2, right? A 2a. So if I multiply 2a with a negative 4, that gives me negative 8a and negative 3a. So negative 8 and negative 3. So I want a minus 4, which makes sense because that will cancel, and 2a minus 3. So again, that gives me negative 3a and negative 8a, which is negative 11 and then reduce, and that leaves a 1 on top, and 2a minus 3 on the bottom. Okay. 
And so I'm just going to try to do this by talking because I kind of ran out of room here. So this is a minus 4 equal to 0. So to solve it, I'm going to add 4 over. And so that means a cannot equal 4. And then I'm going to squeeze a 0 in here. And then solve for a. So I'm going to add 3. So I would have 2a equals 3 and then divided by 2. And so a cannot equal 3 over 2 either. Okay? All right, and then let's do one more here. So let's take a look at 17. So this one I'm just going to do the factoring part for, but I'll let you guys reduce and do your excluded, okay? All right, so for your factoring, you have a cubic, right? So you want to find your binomial and then your trinomial. So whenever you have a power of 3, you're looking for a binomial and a trinomial. So you're trying to find three things that multiply together for 8x cubed. So 2x times itself three times will work. And then negative 5 times itself three times. So 2x times 2x times 2x is 8x to the third. And then negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 125. And then to find my trinomial, my pattern is I want to square the first root, multiply the roots, square the second root. So square, multiply, square. So I want to square 2x, so 2x times itself. And then I want to multiply, so 2x times 5, or 2x times negative 5. But I want to cancel my middle term, so I want to go opposite. And then negative 5 times negative 5. So square the first root, multiply, and then square the second. And then I want to check my sign. So this sign should be the same. This one is opposite and always positive. And now let's factor the denominator. So I have two terms. They're both perfect squares and I'm subtracting. So 4x squared breaks up to 2x and 2x. And negative 25 is negative 5 and 5. So that's just the factor. And then I'll let you guys reduce and find your excluded values. Okay?